Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches. Now, as you guys and girls know, here at Kibble Watches, we are a big fan and advocate of Seiko. Whether it be Seikos that you can get for a couple of hundred pounds, uh, vintage Seiko, Grand Seiko, uh, over £10,000, Creedor, whatever it may be, we are a huge fan. And that is why I am super excited to bring you this episode this week. We have Seikos that vary in price from a couple of thousand all the way up, which is absolutely incredible and a very, very cool drop indeed. Now, as always, you can skip to a specific watch you want to see on the table down in the description. There is a link to every single watch to go directly to the website to see the further details, photos and purchase price uh, if it's still available. So you can do that nice and easy. You can skip all my blabbering, which is also the part I think a lot of you want to do. Um, but I also just want to start off by saying a big thank you. Uh, last week was my wedding and I had a lot of messages from you guys and girls, which was super nice. Um, a lot of you really did respect the, the no phone call and uh, not spamming me with messages. A few of you didn't, but that's just always going to be the case. Um, so thank you very much for those of you who did. Uh, and yes, it was an absolutely beautiful day. I'm very happy. And it was it was good weather, thankfully, which in the UK is quite rare. So we definitely got lucky. And I want to say as well that probably next weekend, so not obviously this weekend, you're watching this the weekend after, I may be away um, on our honeymoon. So um, we've finally booked somewhere. Hopefully it's all going to go ahead. As a lot of you guys know, there's still a lot going on with COVID. There's a lot of flight cancellations. So fingers crossed and touch wood, we're going to be all set and we will be by a beach somewhere just chilling and I will probably be away from my phone completely um, so please forgive me send emails and we'll do our best to get back to you when we can or when I get back um, but still purchase as normal and we'll ship it out as soon as we're back before I forget what is on wrists now I'm wearing my studio underdog this is the mint chocolate chip um, really really fun watch he's just recently released the aubergine I believe uh, in collaboration with Fratello it was an April Fool's joke from before but people loved it so much that he's actually gone and produced the watch in a limited run for Fratello which I thought was really cool um, the success of what Richard over there is doing is brilliant, it's well deserved, I think the designs are fantastic and I'm excited to see what they do in the future. Plus, it's kind of nice that it's paired on Strap Tailor and that's what they do as standard, so there's that collaboration there as well. So not only do I get to support you know, British design and someone doing great things here in the UK, I also get a strap from someone we also support and also stock, so it's sort of uh, you know, a, a collaboration of both that we really, really like. But now that all of the rambling is out of the way, let's get onto the watches, which is what you're here to see. And we're going to start off with probably the most striking, arguably, the most striking watch on the table, and that is the Skyline. Let's take a closer look at this one. So what a watch to begin with. This is the absolutely awesome LX range from Seiko. This is the Skyline, as it's nicknamed. Um, really, really cool. Look at that gradient, the way the blue goes to black. Now, yes, you could definitely say this is semi-inspired by the, the Batman uh, from Rolex, sure. But black and blue is always a combination that works. I'm sure Rolex aren't the only company that have done it. Um, they're just the ones that have definitely taken the fame for it. Um, however, this one is absolutely gorgeous. And the one thing I really love about this is this bezel actually has luminescent material inside. So the whole thing just glows and it glows beautifully beautifully really beautifully done that slightly lighter blue GMT hand contrast nicely you've got the power reserve over there because inside this is a Grand Seiko spring drive um, or spring drive Grand Seiko caliber 5R66 so a lot of the watches we're going to be looking at today are not your standard Seiko so when you see the price you'll probably if you've never seen this range of Seiko you're going to be quite shocked now these are done to the same level as Grand Seiko in terms of finishing quality, production and movement. Everything is done to the same standard and this is no exception. Now this is the SNR049J1 and as I say it has a spring drive caliber 5R66 inside limited to 400 pieces which as you'll see when we go through the watches on the table that's actually quite a limited edition for Seiko and especially this range so 400 is quite a few there isn't many of these out there. Now this is all titanium construction as a lot of you would have probably noticed by the tone um, for those of you who don't know stainless steel and titanium are slightly different colors 
especially when they're finished slightly different you can sort of see that slight color tone uh, titanium is always a bit duller a bit more gray i find um, and obviously incredibly light that is the the sort of feature of titanium beautifully milled clasp you've got uh, no micro adjust which is a bit of a shame um, but you do have some smaller links as well so you can try and get a better fit for yourself but a really great watch uh, nice construction as well nice screw down case back just a good looking piece. Obviously screw down uh, crown as you'd expect for a watch of this kind of um, sort of standard really and especially a 10 bar water resistance as well. Now it's from November 2020. It does come with its full box and papers as does everything on the table that we're going to be discussing today. Please go on the website and see the box shots to see if it comes with an extra strap and we also mention it down in the points of mention on the website as well um, because remembering what comes with each one is quite difficult. Um, but yeah, huge amount of value in these, especially if you are into this kind of thing from Seiko. So I would highly recommend you check it out. But that's enough of the blabbering, and let's try it on, on wrist and talk dimensions. And here it is on my wrist. Now my wrist is just shy of seven inches and you can see it wears well. Now, these watches are big and we're gonna be discussing that as we go through. Uh, pretty much every watch we're gonna be looking at today is on the larger size. Um, this is what this range of Seiko seem to be all about. Now, whether you like that or not, that's for you to decide. However, what I will say is don't write it off by thinking it's too big without trying it on. I think a lot of you will be surprised by how well Seiko do wrist ergonomics. And what I mean by that, they produce their cases in a way that even the bigger watches, for example the turtles and the tuners they wear surprisingly well so i would say come try it on if you have the opportunity if you're considering it and the only thing holding you back is the size you may be surprised now for some of you with smaller wrists yes a lot of these are going to be a bit too big for you but if you're like me and you're okay wearing a bigger watch you're going to be fine with this and i think you'll actually be pleasantly surprised especially because of the titanium construction it is incredibly light it's not like you're wearing a big brick on the wrist so go check this one out on the website. Now, some of these watches do have nicknames, not all of them. Maybe they do, maybe I'm just not aware of them all, but the next one we're gonna be looking at, and you'll have to forgive me for looking over, I wanna make sure I get it correct, is the SNR025J1, which is part of the LX series. Let's take a closer look. And here we have another one from the LX range from Seiko, another good looking piece. Now look at that bezel, really interesting with the sort of um, uh, compass bezel, that's what you call it. I was trying to remember the word then, it just left me. Um, this is friction fit not click fit which is quite unusual but it allows you to sort of treat it as a compass if you wish obviously you've got the bright yellow gmt hand there same configuration as the one we were just looking at power reserve uh, which is a mighty power reserve as well i believe it's 72 hours um, so definitely not a you know small power reserve now this one is the snr 025 j1 uh, as I say, same caliber as the last one, which is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive 5R66. And this one is from July 2021 with its full set box and papers. Again, same screw down crown, same 10 bar rating, uh, 20 bar, sorry, this is 20 bar rating, whereas the other one was 10 bar. I have no idea what the reason for that is, but either way, a very interesting uh, design. Again, titanium, slightly different bracelet. Again, the reason for this, I don't know, but they have a nifty little extension feature. So let me show you how this works because a lot of people see these braces and they don't understand how it works. They think there's no actual dive extension. There is. So just to point out, you have your micro adjust as well, which is very useful. Now, the way this works is the clasp area, so the fold over clasp, you push backwards, it has basically a spring release. I don't know if you can see that. It lifts that, that lip up, which allows you to slide this dive extension out. And then to put it back in, it just ratchets back in over the little lip that you lift up by pushing that back. Now, what this does mean sometimes when you're putting the watch on, you accidentally lift it up a bit too far and you slide it out like so. Let's say you do that, don't worry, put the watch on and then just ratchet it back in and you're off to go. So nice and easy, very well produced um, and you know, slightly different way of doing it. Do I prefer what some of the other brands are doing? Yes, but it's nice to at least have this option, especially if you're just getting a little bit hot outside, you can just open it just that little amount. You can barely even tell, you know, you could ratchet that in even if that's too much. So plenty of options right there. Again, same case back as before, same sort of thick look, um, thick link construction. They are pin and sleeve construction as well on the bracelets. So often with these pieces, the only criticism I have is with the bracelets. The actual watch themselves are insanely well built for the money. And again, if you're looking for a, a GMT watch and you're wanting something slightly different, something a bit more left feet field and something a bit more 
if you know you know kind of piece, these are what you should be looking at. Um, so don't hesitate to come take a look and try them on and see for yourself. But that shows one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my wrist, so same as before. Now, I'm trying to remember if I actually went through the dimensions of the last one, I don't think I did, so I'll have to put them on screen. But this is 45 mil by 50.5 mil lug to lug. So you've got that nice lug to lug length, just over the 50 I always go on about, but not enough that it's gonna be a problem. So you will find, if you have a similar size wrist to me, you can totally wear these. 14.5mm um, thick and 22mm lugs right there on the end. So one to definitely try on if you're unsure, but to be honest, if you've got a wrist size somewhat similar to mine, you can get away with it. Would a bigger wrist suit it better? Probably, but you can wear it. So go check it out on the website. Next up, we're gonna take a look at one of the reinterpretations. This is the SLA025J1 in black. Let's take a closer look. Now for an absolute gem among the Seiko lineup, in my opinion. This is the 1968 recreation SLA025. Uh, limited to 1,500 pieces, and you have this absolutely gorgeous sort of, this mid-between matte and glossy black dial with uh, gold gilting, which is almost like a rose gold. Absolutely stunning, very true to the original, apart from just bought to today's sort of modern uh, build qualities, but also modern sizes for those guys and girls out there who like a bigger watch. And again, we're gonna be saying that with pretty much every watch we're looking at today. These are not small watches, they do wear big. However, they are very, very wearable despite that. You have this gorgeous black bezel, which is ceramic as well, um, and you have the gold on the inside. Absolutely stunning, nice screw down crown, and you can see from the case back, this is monocoque construction, meaning made from one piece of steel. Absolutely incredible. So to get into these watches, you have to go through the front of the case. This is true to what the originals were, true to many watches out there uh, from before, but not so many brands seem to do this nowadays because it's you know, deemed more of a hassle than necessary, uh, which is probably true from a watchmaking standpoint, but from a collecting and sort of purity standpoint, this is very true. Uh, you have nice drilled lug holes as well to make trap, uh, strap changing a breeze absolutely incredible now most importantly inside this watch as you can see written right there at the top beautifully i may add the, you know the text and font on this is perfect this is the automatic high beat seiko caliber 8l55 a very good and reliable movement um you know with specs that really do put it on par with many offerings from from the Swiss, if not better. And I think a lot of people, they see the word Seiko and they shy away. Whereas I think if you have the opportunity to come get this watch in hand or get any of these watches in hand, you know, understand a bit more about the movements and the history of Seiko, you'll start to realize these are Seiko flexing what they can do at this kind of price point. And to be honest, they are putting a lot of the Swiss brands to shame. However, they just don't have that clout and recognition yet. But then I remember back in the day when Grand Seiko didn't have that. I remember trying to sell Grand Seiko six years ago and how difficult that was compared to today. So I do think their time will come. People will realize the offering of what these are. Uh, again, I could be wrong, but we'll see. This is from July 2021. It does come with its full box and paperwork. And let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my wrist. Now, if you're thinking of the LXs or this, and you're going purely based on the way it wears, I would say this is a bit more manageable on most people's wrist. Again, do come and try them on if you have the opportunity and see for yourself. But this is 45 mil by 51 mil lug to lug, only 15.5 mil thick. I know I said only, but <laughs> it is quite thick and it does wear large, but again, Again, it does wear okay. As long as you're not trying to pair this up with a suit and fit it under a tight cuff, you're gonna be okay. Uh, 19 mil lugs are a little bit awkward, but luckily it does come on this really cool sort of waffle uh, rubber strap. Again, very true to what the original would have been. Um, so go check this one out on the website. Next, we're gonna take a look at the blue one, which is very similar, and it is the SLA039J1. Let's take a closer look. Next up is the 55th anniversary piece for Seiko, or one of the 55th anniversary pieces. I'm sure they did multiple, but this is again the 1968 recreation based on one of their vintage models. A lot of you guys and girls who are a big fan of Seikos will know all about that. But this is basically the same watch as the one we just looked at, apart from it has this beautiful, subtle blue dial. And the reason I'll say this is subtle is because it's quite a sort of toned down blue. It's not this big, vibrant blue that we'll be looking at later on 
on some of the other watches, this is a very mellow blue and I think it works beautifully with the black of the bezel and the loom and everything like that, it just, it works. It really, really works. So well done Seiko on this one. Now this is the reference SLA039J1 and this is limited to 1,100 pieces. Just like the one we looked at previously, inside here again is a automatic Seiko Highbeat 8L55, a very reliable and great movement. Um, you know, as we just said, we went over it all. I really do think these are on par with a lot of the Swiss options at this kind of price range. You've just got to be willing to sort of have Seiko on the wrist. Um, you know, and the general public looking at it are probably going to think it's a couple of hundred pound watch. Now for me, someone like myself, I think that's awesome. I love that point. Now for some other people, they want their watch to say something to a lot of people. And that's okay if that's you. Um, you know, but I think for those who aren't all about that, Seiko is the way you should go. And especially these high-end ones. Um, so yeah, this one is from September 2020. It does come with its full box and paperwork, like all the watches we're looking at today. But let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And just before we do, again, same monocoque construction. So it is all one piece of steel. Very cool. And here we go on my wrist. Now, same dimensions as the one we were looking at just before. You have 45 mil by 51 mil lug to lug, 15.5 mil thick and 19 mil lugs. So endless options on the straps, even though 19 is a bit trickier. I think Crafter Blue do some fantastic options for all the Seikos we're looking at today. They seem to be the brand a lot of people gravitate towards. And I think some of the ones we have actually come with an additional Crafter Blue strap. So definitely worth checking out. Let's bring it back around to a spring drive. And this is a very, very cool piece, especially if you're into the all black stealth look. And this is the SNR031 J1. Let's have a closer look. Next up is another Seiko from the LX range, and this time all black titanium. Absolutely awesome. I love the way this one looks and the way it plays with the light as well. You think for an all black watch, you know, it, it won't have that much play, but this is really surprising because of those sort of different finishes and especially on the bezel and the hands, everything just works really, really well. A good looking watch. This is the SNR 031J1. Um, and it, in as same as the other ones, it has the uh, Grand Seiko Spring Drive Caliber 5R65, a very, very reliable uh, spring drive movement. Now, as we flip it over, you can see normal screw down case back, nice fitted black rubber strap. And this one also from memory comes with a fitted Seiko black leather strap as well, which is quite interesting. And you can sort of mix and match between the two. Uh, so you have got that option. Now this one seems to me, and again, maybe it's the fitted rubber strap, but it wears much better than the other two LXs, in my opinion. It sort of slopes the wrist a lot nicer, which again suggests those LXs on a rubber strap may wear a bit better for most people. Uh, granted, not for everyone. As I say, most of these watches we're talking about today are big watches. So if you're a small watch person, you probably want to stay away in general. But this one's from August 2021. It does come with its full box and paperwork. And let's show it on wrist and taut dimension. Here we go on my wrist. Now, I find this very comfortable, actually, and the titanium really helps with that. And I think this, as I say, the fitted black rubber just makes it slope around the wrist really nice. This is 45 mil by 50.5 mil lug to lug, 16 mil thick and 22 mil lugs. So endless options on the lugs. As I say, you've got kind of the two perfect options in my opinion, the black rubber and the black leather. So go check those out today. Now on to the 55th anniversary piece, uh, nicknamed the Glacier. Let's have a look. This is the SLA 043J1. Next up is the Seiko 55th anniversary Glacier, as it's known. And that's because of the blue, uh, the Glacier blue dial and the blue hand. It really pops, especially against the black uh, bezel. Absolutely gorgeous watch. And as a lot of you will know by looking at this, this is Seiko's reinterpretation of their 62 MAS or 62 MAS. As a lot of you guys and girls know, we had a original one a little while back. Absolutely stunning. It still was partially stickered. And seeing this one in the metal, it's kind of amazing how true to the original they've gone. Now, granted, size-wise, they have definitely beefed it up. But all of the sort of details, especially with the case back and the way they've done this case back, interestingly, is similar to the original, um, which is kind of surprising because this would probably fade away after, you know, many years granted, but similar to how the original did. So I'm surprised they still went with that. But it's nice to see them actually sticking true to what it has always been. And even down to that crown with the Seiko written right through it. Absolutely gorgeous, really cool design and really cool looking watch. Now, the reference to this one is the SLA043. 
um, and this one is from, uh, it actually is a limited edition of 1,700 pieces. And inside this is the automatic Seiko Caliber 8L35, a very good and reliable movement. We're gonna be discussing that movement probably a fair bit throughout the video, because there's quite a few watches coming up that have the movement. Um, it's, it's definitely more of a Grand Seiko level quality finish and everything like that. And I believe, and I could be corrected on this, but I believe they use a variant of the 8L35 in the Grand Seikos as well. So there's a lot of shared technology going on. This is from July 2021 and it does come with its box and paperwork. But let's show this one on wrist because again, for those of you who don't like the bigger watches, this is probably a lot more wearable for most of you. So let's show it. And here we go on my wrist. As you can see, that is very, very comfortable at 40 mil by 48 mil lug to lug 14 mil thick and 19 mil lug so lots of options right there again craft a blue but either way this pairing i think works really well and a good looking watch as i say a lot more wearable than some of the others we've been looking at so go check this one out on the website now on to a 1968 reinterpretation as they call it and this is a really cool one they i think it's also got the nickname the the antarctic ice could be wrong on that one but this is absolutely gorgeous the sla 055J1, probably the most wearable, and we'll get onto that as we talk about these watches as well, so let's have a closer look. Next up is the Antarctic Ice, as it's called. This is absolutely gorgeous, really, really cool piece. The texture to the dial was fascinating, the color on the bezel, everything just really works so well, and what I will say straight off the bat is that this is incredibly wearable comparative to what we've been looking at and I hope this becomes the new profile for what Seiko are trying to do along these ranges. Now, as I keep saying when we're trying these on, they are wearable, you can totally wear them. However, this is going to be much more universal across most collectors. So I think it's in Seiko's best interest as well to sort of make things more of this profile. But either way, this is an absolutely gorgeous watch. The SLA 055J1, uh, limited to 1,300 pieces. As I say, really cool dial, nice case shape. Again, a 1968 reinterpretation. Nice screw down case back, and hidden away under that case back is the automatic Seiko Caliber 8L35. As I said before, a very reliable and good movement that I believe they use a configuration of it or a sort of adaption of it among the Grand Seiko lineup. So you can expect very good quality and everything from this. Now this is from January 2022, so it's only a few months old. Um, across all the watches we're looking at today, they've all been kept in fantastic condition, uh, very lightly worn if, you know, worn a couple of times at most, to be honest with you. Um, this has come from a collector who, as you can tell, has a lot of pieces and enjoys rotating and just sort of enjoying the pieces lightly. Uh, which is always good when we get them because then you get your opportunity to have sort of a brand new watch at a fraction of the price, um, which is always good. So let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my wrist. Again, a much more comfortable profile. Very, very nice. Something I would happily wear regularly and I think a lot of you guys and girls would as well. Um, so this is 42.5 mil by 49 mil lug to lug. 13 mil thick, so one of the thinnest we'll be looking at today, and 20 mil lug, so again, endless options on the lug size. This, in my opinion, is Seiko realizing they need to tone it down a little bit for most people. Um, granted, not everyone. I know plenty of people who absolutely love the sizes of the other ones. However, this, I think, is more universal, so go check it out on the website. Now we're on to my favorite on the table, and it probably will come as no surprise to those who know me, and that is the Willard, and this is absolutely gorgeous. This is the SLA049 J1. Let's take a closer look. So as I say, my favorite watch from the drop, this is the Seiko Willard. I absolutely love this. I've been a massive fan. I really would like to own an original one day, and as you guys and girls probably know, I've owned most of the Seiko Turtles, granted, slightly different design, um, which we can get onto in a second, but I've owned most of the Turtles, and I would love to own an original Willard. We have sold one in the past. I wish I could have kept it, but I couldn't, unfortunately. I wasn't in a position to. Whereas this, this sort of recreation, reinterpretation, Seiko keep flick, uh, flickering between the two. Um, this is actually really nicely done. Beautiful dial, beautiful finish in the blue is fantastic. And this is the SLA 049J1, limited to 1,200 pieces. And it's from January 2022. So again, you're getting yourself basically a new watch. Now this one does compare on a bracelet. If this was me, I'd be swapping this straight out for a rubber strap. I just think this watch looks incredible on a rubber as opposed to a bracelet. However, it's, it doesn't look bad. It just doesn't work for me personally. 
Um, inside here is the automatic Seiko Caliber 8L35. Again, you're going to hear that caliber a lot, uh, especially if you're looking at the Seiko catalog of these more higher end pieces. And you have the same construction. Um, no, you don't. You have a slightly different construction with a flip lock uh, sort of uh, dive extension, which flicks open you have to like fold it back in so slightly different than the one we were looking at where you push down and slides up and you do have some micro adjust on the bracelet which is very important for getting a very good fit really cool watch one of my favorites from this week for sure and i suspect for a lot of you it will also be your favorite and again very manageable on the size because the original was also very manageable on the size it was a big watch very similar to this actually a 44 mil but it was also quite thin, so you've got the sort of added bonus of that. But let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my wrist. I absolutely love this, as I say, on a rub strap and you'll be set. This is 44 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 13 mil thick and 20 mil lug. So endless options right there on the rub strap. Plus you've got push pin holes on pretty much all of the watches we've been looking at today to make strap changing super easy and super uh, sort of quick to do as well. So go check this one out on the website. And now we're on to the Marine Masters, which we have three of, and we've been fortunate to have had a few of these over the years, different colors, uh, and it's good to have the three colors all together right here. So let's start with the black. Next up is the Marine Masters. So pre-owned, you can get these around 2,000 pounds, and I believe we're asking just a smidge under 2,000 pounds. And at that kind of price point, you really are getting a ton of watch for the money. And I think it really is comparable to most uh, offerings from the Swiss counterparts in their dive range. Now, granted, it's a bigger watch, but it is very wearable. And we, as Danny just suggested, we should have a counter saying how many times I say I love it and it's wearable. Um, so if we did that, and you may, maybe make it into a drinking game. Let me know how far you get, guys. But this is the SLA021J1. Again, inside is the automatic Seiko Caliber 8L35. And uh, as you can see, monocoque construction again, so all one piece really beautiful construction and these are just fantastic absolutely love the design language and the simplicity of text it's not over complicated it's not over the top you've got this sort of browny orange uh, second hand which is really nice as well beautiful bezel and the action on these are brilliant as well so again they tick a lot of boxes and I'm going to be saying it I've probably said it across the board on all these watches and the reason being a lot of people still don't give Seiko the recognition and the credit they deserve at this range they still think of them as the SKXs and the Seiko 5s and all these and that's what Seiko do but they also produce these kind of things and I think it really is the kind of stuff you've got to do more research on you've got to come and see and try on in person and you will understand why me and so many others out there speak so highly of them uh, again, you've got that dive extension system where you push the clasp and it springs out and it ratchets back in nice and easy and you have adjustments, micro adjustments on the clasp. Thank you, Seiko. Uh, also, as with most of the watches been looking at today, you have push pin holes to change the strap out nice and easy. But let's show this one. Oh, no, before we do, uh, this is from July 2021 as are all the Marine Masters on the table today. And they all come with their box and papers and I believe additional straps. Check the website, check the photos and check the points of mention. That's where we put all the important bits and bobs. So let's try on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go on wrist. So 44 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 15 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. Uh, that's going to be the same across all the Marine Masters, as I said, we're looking at today. But a gorgeous watch. Go check it out on the website. Now on to the limited edition green, which is the SLA 047 J1. Let's take a closer look. Next up, we have the Marine Master with the green dial, the black bezel. And again, that sort of orangey, browny uh, second hand, which looks really, really cool. Contrasts nicely with the 300 meters written down there. Screw down crown, bezel the same as the last one we looked at. Construction, everything monocoque, the same as before. And again, the 8L35 inside. Now this is a limited edition. I don't know how many of, but it just says limited edition on the back. I've been unable to find it. I'm sure you guys and girls could find it pretty quick, but this is the SLA 047J1, again from July 2021 with its box and papers. Just like the last one, you've got that very well-built uh, clasp with the 
extension that ratchets out and in, nice and easy dive extension um, and micro adjust to make uh, the fit perfect for you guys and girls. Now, I really like the rubber options on this. I, as I say, I believe all the Marine Masters we've got are come with a rubber option, either from Seiko or Crafter Blue. Um, so you've definitely got those options with it, which is good for the price because those straps are not cheap. Um, as far as I'm aware, they're not exactly like ludicrously expensive, but they are fitted and they wear very, very well and comfortably. But let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on wrist, 44 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 15 mil thick and 20 mil lugs. Drilled lug holes uh, to make changing the straps nice and easy. And believe me, you'd be able to do it super quick and super easy. So go check this one out on the website for more details. And last but not least of the Marine Masters, my favorite of the bunch, and that is the blue with the black dial, which is the SLA 023J1. And the final of the Marine Masters, this is the SLA 023, which I think I said has a blue something with a black dial. I don't even know what I was saying, but it's basically a blue dial, blue bezel. That's what it is. Um, not whatever I said in the intro. So again, like before, automatic Seiko caliber 8L35 inside from July 2021. Build quality, everything fantastic. We've spoken about it across the three. So if you missed that, go see the first one because that's the one I go into most detail about. So I'm not going to bore you to death going over the same sort of stuff, uh, although I'll probably have this entire video. So my apologies. Um, but that shows one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go, 44 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 15 mil thick and 20 mil lugs. Again, rubber strap options are the best for me personally on the Marine Masters. I would always wear it on the rubber. I personally probably wouldn't wear it on the bracelet. This has some options as you'll see when you go over to the website. So you're getting a lot for your money, that's for sure. So go check it out over there. And last but certainly not least is the tuner as its nickname and you can see why. So let's take a closer look at this awesome piece. And last but certainly not least, the Seiko tuner. Now, the reason this is called the tuner or tuner is because of the case. Look at that construction, kind of like a tuner can. Uh, you have this outer, um, Danny over there has just figured out why it's called the tuner, I think. I think that's what's just <laughs> happened live on air. Right here, oh, and Leah's just snorted. You know what, we're gonna continue, we're on the last watch. This is this is not how I intended this to go. Professionalism at its finest anyway. So, you have this construction still underneath. You can actually take this outer ring off and you're left without it. Um, obviously, if you take it off, you're left without it. That's funny how that works. Um, but then you've got the steel underneath without the shell, basically. And it's a very unique look. I've actually seen a couple of people do it and wear it that way. Um, but a very cool looking watch, very unique design, and actually practical. That was the point when they did it. You have these gaps here to be able to rotate the bezel a bit easier. That was the intended purpose, although you can still sort of do it just by gripping a little bit more difficult but a very good looking watch. Again, you have that gradient blue, very similar to the Skyline. However, it's reversed as you can see, which is super cool. And you can see the quartz ticking away. So inside this is a Seiko Quartz Caliber 7C46. And the reference to this one is S2365J1. We're just gonna continue. I don't know what they're doing in the background, but I wanna get this done. So July, 2021, it does come with a full box and paperwork. And again, a monocoque design. So all through the front. Very interesting turn lock crown as well. And gold accents, which kind of sort of match the, the dial. Very interesting. Uh, but let's show it on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on wrist. So as you can see, that sort of tuna can shape just wears really well because this is 49 millimeters. Probably one of the biggest watches we've had in the in the shop, really, uh, or definitely up there. But because it's perfectly round, you've got 49 all the way around. Now, the lug to lug is also 49. Obviously, you have these little protrusions right here, but you don't measure that because that's not where the lugs come off. They come off right under there. So 16 mil thick and 22 mil lugs. As I say, there are, I believe, another strap option. I could be wrong, so check the website for more information. But a really good looking watch. Go check it out today. So there you have it, guys and girls. That is this week's drop. Again, a very interesting drop for those of you who like Seiko and don't just want the sort of core entry-level Seiko range. This is the stuff for you. Uh, if you don't like Seiko, oh, I'm sorry. This has probably been your least favorite drop we've ever done. Uh, usually we try and mix and match, but this week we thought we'd try a theme. Um, so let us know down below. Do you like it when it's themed or do you like it when it's a complete sort of mishmash of all sorts. Um, I've got a feeling a lot of people are gonna say the mishmash. Um, I would probably agree with you, but to have this many 
and sort of curate this kind of selection is quite rare. It's very difficult. And often you won't even see Seiko stockers have this kind of stuff um, all at the same time. So I'm very honoured to be able to do this. So it's um, something we've wanted to do for a while. So I'm very happy we could do it. But thank you all very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you're purchasing a few if these are your thing. If not, I hope it's made you at least think and consider these kind of watches. And maybe if you have the opportunity, swing by the showroom. Come try them on and see for yourself what all the fuss is about. But there you have it. We'll see you all again next week. Take care.